My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm very excited to be talking with you, with you this evening. And the reason is, is because I think we finally have a chance to expose CPS, to expose CPS. If you live in Texas, perhaps you are aware that there is a commission right now that is investigating CPS. CPS is an agency that supposedly is there to protect children. I, pr I refer to CPS as children's predatory services, not children protective services. Children's pr predatory services has done more damage to our children and to our families that can be imaginable, has caused more pain to be suffered, and we finance this with taxpayer money. It appears that this may be our opportunity to expose some of the evil that takes place in CPS and perhaps get either reform to the agency or perhaps even abolish the agency. Perhaps the best thing that could happen right now, instead of doubling their budget, would be to cut their budget by 50% or by 75% or to get rid of them altogether. Anyway, all I can tell you is this. We do have people that are listening to us right now. After years and years of hearing reports and rumors about CPS abuse and maybe thinking, well, they're just one-off situations, it appears that finally, finally our legislators are going to start listening to us and that maybe they will begin to understand that this is a widespread industry of abuse, a widespread industry of lies and, and arrogance, and just they do things to destroy families. Anyway, what I can tell you is this, is that I have now opened up an email. My email is exposecpsabuse, exposecpsabuse at gmail.com. You can write to me from wherever you are, preferably in the state of Texas. There are some people that are now going to be listening to us and I was just able to make connections with one person in particular and said that I would be able to gather stories. I know there are stories throughout the state of Texas. If you're in Georgia, if you're in California and other places, I know you have your issues too. Huge issues. But we can't deal with this in the state of Texas. We'd love to hear your stories still, but right now the priority is going to be the, the CPS abuse stories that have taken place in the state of Texas. Times when CPS walks into a house and thinks that they have to kidnap kids to protect them while they're destroying families. Times when, when CPS wants to say that if you don't listen to us, we will keep your kids from you or we will terminate your parental rights. And I can speak to this personally. I was at a case in Collin County, Judge Piper McGraw's court, and CPS was there. They were trying to terminate the rights of a father. Why? Because the mother wanted a divorce and she felt it was in the best interest of the children to be put into a foster care. The father says that my children, I love them. I want to be with them. Yes, there are daughters and I'm going to need help understanding daughter things, but I love my children. And CPS wanted to take the children from him. As they were leaving the courtroom, I asked the man his name, my, the father his name, I asked his attorney her name, and she just looked at me in a gas and horror and said, don't talk to this guy, he has a YouTube channel. CPS came out and I asked the CPS attorney what her name was. And that coward, that coward who spent, I don't remember how long trying to take away the father's rights, went and reported me to the bailiff to try to get me arrested. That CPS coward, that's what she did. So I and, and people, two people in the courtroom said that the father was able to keep the children. The judge ruled in his favor. They both thought it was because the judge recognized who I was and I was sitting in the courtroom. I was in another case prior to that in which a friend of mine had had 47 false allegations submitted against him by his ex-wife to CPS and she would use different counselors and things like that and would just continue to submit allegations because the counselors of course they have a duty to report they have to believe the allegations and the reports even when the when the children said this is not true they still had to be investigating the reports CPS is an abusive agency oh by the way my friend had to spend over half a million dollars protecting himself against the abusive nature of CPS there are many, many stories I could tell you. My personal story began with CPS in 2015 when my youngest grandson, Gideon, had to go to the hospital because at 10 months of age, he had a circumcision done by this Jewish rabbi who travels the country circumcising babies. They were concerned about what happened. And I told my daughter, please take him into the hospital. As far as the costs were concerned, I was willing to take those costs. I did not want to see my son Gideon, my grandson Gideon, die. And I was willing to do whatever. And somehow in the midst of this, CPS 
got involved. The hospital called CPS. By the way, this was Children's Medical Center, and they're famous for a lot of different things. Like, I mean, they had the Genesis Clinic running, the, the clinic that transitions kids, minors. This is an abominable place. They may be good in some areas, but they are also very abusive. Anyway, my understanding is, and I don't know all of these facts for sure, is that they called CPS. And the caseworker, Penny Hutchinson. Penny Hutchinson got involved. I talked with her on the phone six times. I still have the phone logs, Penny, as you know. I begged her. I pleaded with her to tell my daughter I had nothing to do with this because of the way these things turned out is that CPS would not tell my daughter that your grandfather did not report you to CPS. CPS thought that they had to protect the anonymity of the hospital and CPS let me take the fall. I have not seen my grandchildren for about seven years since then. So yes, this is personal to me. As a grandfather who loved his grandchildren, as a grandfather who I have no hesitation in saying I was among the best of grandfathers to my grandchildren. My youngest grandson, Gideon, took his first steps walking to me. My older grandson, Cruz, no matter whose arms he was in, when he saw me, he would wiggle out and come running to see me. I still have diapers of theirs from seven years ago when they were at our house. Sometimes we would be at our house five times. I would go over to their place and I would babysit them. I had videos with them, pictures with them. Never imagined in my life that a government agency such as CPS could do such devastation and destruction. As a result of their actions, I was sued by my daughter, even though I had nothing to do with it. In fact, the truth is, is that had it not been me intervening, she may have lost rights to her children. The abusive nature of CPS, that's what I was against. And my intent from that point on was to try to expose and take down the agency. This agency that has caused so much personal grief to me, so much grief to my grandchildren, and by the way, the Department of Family Protective Services, 18 months later, after I got a senator involved, they wrote a letter to me and said, well, we've researched things, and we found out that you weren't the person that did it. These lying people, these people that took no responsibility, oh, they sent a letter, and that's going to cover their rear ends. They would not say anything to my daughter. They would not exonerate me. So yes, I have a personal mission against CPS. The first time I went down to Austin was to testify against CPS. And I did not have any clue what I was doing, but I knew I could not be silent. I went down there. They gave me half an hour. I did not know the protocols. Uh, it should have taken five minutes, but they let me speak. And I've been speaking ever since. One of the main goals that I have, in addition to repealing unilateral no-fault divorce, and in addition to fighting for family integrity and for fighting for children to have access to both parents and their extended families is to expose the abuse of CPS. I spoke directly with Hank Whitman who was the director at one time. He shook my hand as a military veteran. He was going to act on my behalf. To the best of my knowledge, he did not. Whenever another CPS abuse or neglect came, case came up, of course his response was, we're doing our best, somebody slipped through the cracks. When you have everybody slipping through the cracks, it's no longer that somebody slipped through the cracks, it's that the system itself is bad. But the solution, of course, was to give them more money. More money, we would be able to fix the problems and stop people from slipping through the cracks. The issue, in my opinion, by and large, was the, ex the way that the CPS people would take children, kidnap children, and sometimes, in a sense, almost be directly involved or indirectly involved in facilitating child trafficking. And I say this for a very specific reason. Gregory Rogers, who is the CEO of the U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking, has stated that in 65% of the people that they've found involved in human trafficking, 65% of them, they have come from foster care. Foster care, by the way, which CPS has put children in, because CPS, in their all-wise decisions, as they, as they exercise their abuse of power, they will take children from good parents and put them in a foster care situation. Sometimes they are loved and cared for, sometimes they are abused. Kids run away and they go to the streets and they get involved and they become trafficked. This is what your CPS in the state of Texas does. We have an opportunity to talk about the abuse of CPS. My email that I've set up specifically for this, once again, is exposedcpsabuse.com. Or exposedcpsabuse at gmail.com. I have a phone number here too. I bought a phone so that I could have a phone number so that if people wanted to contact me this way, you could also contact me via my phone number. The phone number for Exposed CPS Abuse 
use is 469-739-2874. Once again, that is 469-739-2874. And again, I'm going to ask the people in Texas primarily to be using this number. I empathize with you people in Georgia. I empathize with you people in California and other places throughout the United States. But we can only focus right now on the state of Texas. I will also say this too. As you see, I'm wearing my Project Veritas cap. I've got very highly placed friends within Project Veritas. And Project Veritas is very interested in exposing abuse everywhere. Uh, I've talked with different people that are very high up personally on several occasions. You can also, or if you would prefer that I do so, we can send our reports to Veritas Tips. That's V-E-R-I-T-A-S T-I-P-S at projectveritas.com. Now, if you send something to Project Veritas or Veritas Tips at projectveritas.com, you have to have a succinct and concise story. You have to have proof. It cannot be hearsay allegations. You have to have something. Preferably, record them. Have an audio device with you. Have a video device. If CPS comes to your house and if your house is equipped with video monitoring and, and audio video, have it running. Record these people. It's when we record them that they start to become afraid because the evil that they do, they do with the idea that they will have immunity, that they will be protected by the state. We must expose this evil just like we must expose the evils that take place in our family courts. Now, what I'm also going to say is this. When you write to me, please keep it succinct. I'm going to give you some guidelines. I don't have the ability to read 50 pages of your of what took place to you. I don't even have the ability to read two pages. Keep it succinct and concise. You've got to look at this as if somebody is seeing this for the first time. Create a timeline. It's such and such a time. August 2010, September 2000, whatever it may be. Put it down there. Make it so that people can understand it. Put down a couple of names. Put down your name, what your relationship to the children are. Put down the children's name. If there's an ex-husband or an ex-wife who's making allegations of abuse, if there are CPS workers who have violated your constitutional rights, if there are neighbors who have filed false complaints against you, put them down there. We have to have a framework to work with. And look at it to say, I've got to be able to communicate my story in three to five paragraphs at the most. We want to have it so it's an executive summary. You can write a detailed report later, and please do. That's something that you need to do. You need to be able to have it readily accessible, not so that you start with 2004 and you bring it to 2013 and back to 2008 and 2000. Nobody can follow that stuff. Keep it chronological. Make it concise. This is what CPS did. This is how they abused. This is the result. Do that. Send me that. You can make it one page. If it needs to be two pages, make it two pages, but no more than two. If it's more than two pages, I'm not going to look at it. That's going to be the deal. I'm sorry I do this as a volunteer, but I do this because of what CPS has done to destroy the relationship that I had with my grandchildren. And I have waited. I have waited for years, since 2015, for this opportunity. I've been out in front of Austin testifying. There's been many people who've been fighting this much longer than I have. And I thank them that they paved the way so that I can have a part in this. But this is our time. It is time to expose CPS abuse. Expose CPS abuse. And we have people that are starting to listen to us. If you're in Texas, I've spoken with many of you people down here. I've spoken with fathers. I've spoken with mothers. I've spoken with grandparents. I've spoken with numerous people that have talked about the abuse that CPS has foisted upon us. And then they make us pay for their abuse. And then the state of Texas defends the agency and they grant them immunity. We can no longer permit this to happen. If a CPS worker lies to you, if a CPS worker violates your rights, if a CPS worker abuses you, these CPS workers must not have immunity. And we must also fight against this, this idea that somehow the state of Texas needs to defend injustice. This will go to the highest levels of government. 
please write to me. I want to have the reports. There are also some hearings coming up, I believe, in May, from what I've heard. I will keep you posted as to those hearings. If you go down to testify, again, keep your testimony short. The first time I went, I spoke for almost 30 minutes. I had no clue what to do. I just had to say something. I've learned a lot since then. Maybe my testimony would have been much more powerful had I known I had three to five minutes. Make sure that you get your testimony right. And do not let these legislators off the hook. Legislators are responsible for a lot of the abuse that CPS has, has perpetrating. They are responsible. They control the purse strings. They are going to be told with a little more money, with another 10% increase, with maybe instead of $2 billion a year, maybe if we up it by another half a billion dollars, we'll take care of these problems. They are lying to you. This is an abusive agency. And just to go back a little bit in time, even in communist Russia, communist Russia realized that no government agency could replace the love of a natural mother and father. Do not listen to these people when they tell you they love your children. When I went in talking to trying to get CPS to tell the truth about what took place with my grandchildren, I had a supervisor. Her name was Mia. And she said how she loved my children, my grandchildren. She loved my grandchildren. She had never even met my grandchildren. She just spent no money on them, spent no time with them, made no sacrifices on their behalf. But the arrogance of Mia, the CPS worker, telling me that she loved my grandchildren as if she loved my grandchildren more than I did. It just frosted me. And Penny Hutchinson, who had every opportunity to do something to make things right, and says, well, that wasn't part of her. And by the way, Penny did lie, lie to me as well. Uh, I don't think that she did so intentionally because she kind of backed up later on when I called her after what took place took place. And then she felt very sorrowful. But Penny, I would love you to come out. We need people from the inside of CPS to come forward too. If you are a CPS worker and you're no longer with them because in good conscience, you could no longer continue continue with them come out tell your stories and you I would take more than two pages from we need to have people come out and tell the story of CPS abuse insiders come out and tell your stories and you might be the perfect insiders that we could actually get you onto Project Veritas and expose this corrupt and this wicked industry so once again if you have a story of CPS abuse please please send it to me. Expose CPS abuse at gmail.com. You can send me the story there. I did put out my, my phone number. Let me see if I have it here again. It's a brand new phone. I don't know if I remember it. It's 469 739-2874. This is our time. And if you've been, uh, if you know somebody who's been affected by CPS, please pass on this video to them. I want to see family law, CPS, divorce laws, the whole family dest destruction industry in Texas come crashing down. My entire YouTube channel is devoted primarily to that issue. So if you're with me, please feel free to subscribe. Please feel free to have other people subscribe. Uh, my YouTube channel is not monetized. My YouTube channel has been found to go against the community guidelines, the high and lofty community guidelines of YouTube. I never did this for profit. I wanted to come in there and I wanted to change the system. It is, there's a Chinese proverb that goes something like this. The mark of a good society is one man plants a tree knowing that he will never sit underneath its shade. And we are fighting right now, not just for ourselves, but we are fighting for future generations. I do not want to see my grandchildren raised up in a state where this abusive, immoral, evil, wicked, unjust system, whether it be CPS, whether it be the anti-family courts, whether it be the entire family destruction industry, that they would never have to face that. That we could look at that as being something on the ash bin of history. Please, again, contact me with your story. Let other people know about it. And let's take down, let's expose CPS. Let's bring the pressure so hot and heavy that there's no way that the legislature can ignore us anymore. And there's no way they could say, well, maybe this is a blip. This is more than a blip. This is a widespread abuse industry. And there are very many uh, stories that you could put out there that would say that Children's Protective Services is also involved 
either directly or indirectly in child trafficking, we must stop CPS. Please contact me today or as soon as you can. We want to expose this abuse industry. Expose CPS abuse at gmail.com. Thank you very much.